You don't fear any preacher, any pioneer, anyone. They are just bold to their destruction. It says, listen, Lymas is sorcerer. When somebody is doing evil and is able to do that evil for a long, long time, and people don't even realize, the deputy did not realize, this man has another subterranean power and hindering him from getting life eternal. Why don't you understand that there are people like that, they have this power underneath, occultic, evil, sorcery. It says the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, and his action is also like that. We stood them seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. And then in verse 9, here's what we are talking about, courageous prayer. And here it was the first time of Paul and Barnabas on the field where they went. And yet when this evil man with evil spirit, with evil power, with evil intention, with evil agenda, when he confronted them, were told then Saul, who is also called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him. You know, many believers, the first thing you do is somebody has, you know, that kind of occulty power, that kind of evil power, that kind of spiritual power, that kind of gang uh, power. If they have that and you happen to know and they are in oppression, they are in oppression, then you, you drop your head, you only what you like do, your head is scattered, you are confused. When you have the Spirit of God and you're obedient to God and you are partakers of the benefits of the covenant, you look straight and you look at them and the fire from the spirit in you will burn off the power in them in Jesus name. It says then Saul who is called Paul filled with the Holy Ghost set his eyes on him and then in verse 10 it says and said O full of all subtlety and all mischief thou child of the devil that that's how you pray when you're praying courageous prayer you don't you know parambulate and say this one say it that way as if you're afraid to say the right thing i don't want them to hear what i have in mind and then god understands that then you pray a kind of prayer that has no energy and no spirit no punch in any life it says thou child of the devil thou enemy of all righteousness will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord. Then in verse 11, he says, And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind. Paul, you are coming here for the first time, and you're talking to a man, thou shalt be blind? What if you didn't become blind? But if God does not answer that kind of prayer, would he not say that you are, you know, you don't have power? This man has power. Be careful how you deal with the situation. Look at Paul. This is why we call it courageous prayer. The courageous prayer of all covenant keeping beneficiaries. He said, Thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season, and immediately. That's how God will answer your prayer. Yeah. Immediately. I said that's how God will answer your prayer. Yeah. We have more power if we're obedient to the Lord, if we're saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. We have more power than those people hiding in the village and they're trying to throw something spiritually, you know, across the seas and they're trying to throw to anybody here before it gets there to return to them. Yeah. It says immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness and they went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. I hope you understand. The man lost his sight immediately. 
The man lost his job immediately. He went out. He couldn't stay with the deputy anymore without even disengaging him and without stopping his service there. No use again. Number one, he has lost his power. He has lost his occultism. He has lost his sight. He lost his job and he lost the respect he used to have from the deputy. That man used to look at him up there as the power that be it is lost everything. All those people that try to fight against anyone standing in the covenant blessing of the Lord, they will lose everything they have got. And then he went out seeking some to lead him by the hand. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, then the deputy when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. We're looking at uh, Psalm 50. In Psalm 50, we're reading from verse 5. Psalm 50, reading from verse 5, uh, it's talking about the people that God is calling. He wants them to gather together unto Him uh, and to offer a prayer that will not be denied. In Psalm 50, verse 5, uh, it says, Gather my saints, not sinners, not backsliders not hypocrites, not people who are playing religion, not traditional people without the real uh, evidence of salvation and following the Lord. It says, gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant, a covenant with me by sacrifice. Not those who come with empty hands, no sacrifice, empty hearts, no surrender, empty life, no submission, empty perception, and no, no yieldedness unto God. Gather my saints unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Let's look at verse 15. In verse 15, and call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver thee and I will deliver thee, and I will deliver thee, and I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Look at verse 16. But unto the wicked, but unto the people who remain habitually sinners, but unto the worshippers who will not change anything, but unto the people praying, 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 prayer, 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 prayer is the key. But their lives will not turn around. But unto the wicked, God says, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes? Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? Wicked, sinful, backsliding will not return, will not repent, will not make restitution, will not turn around their lives to follow the path of righteousness. It says, what hast thou to do that thou sh shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? Look at verse 17. In verse 17, seeing thou hatest instruction. You're only looking for bread and butter. Thou hatest instruction. You're only looking for money. Thou hatest instruction. You're only looking for physical, external blessing. Thou hatest instruction and casteth my words behind thee. Everything we've heard, they cast that behind them. Covenant month, covenant month, we're going to pray. What have you got to do with prayer and covenant when you cast my words behind thee? Verse 18. In verse 18, when thou sawest a seed, then thou contendest with him and has been partaker with adulterers. When you see thieves, they are, they are looking for where to hide their booties. Oh, we say, I'm here. And then 
you put the thing there. Thieves, they will, they want to put the money you have stolen in one account. They'll never discover this. Put it in my account. And then you look at all those things, and then it says they're adulterers, you're partakers for them. And you know, they get their money through adultery, fornication, and prostitution. And then you get the money, and it's offering. And it's offering. I don't care where they get the offering. I'm here. You can put the money there. If you can put, uh, you know, 10,000, 100,000, 1 million, then God will bless you. And then, but you know what they are doing. You know where they are getting the money. And the resources from the dog shall not come into the sanctuary of the Lord. And then you've done all that. And then you are praying, praying, praying. God says, stop the prayer. What kind of God do you think I am? Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God in heaven. We must appreciate the nature of God, which is the nature of holiness, and not just bringing money. What's, what's money going to do? A sinner bringing money for us to use to save sinners, and he himself remains a sinner, and is coming every month, every year, and is not saved. It's not making restitution. It's still doing the evil thing he was doing, and the sinner is bringing the money so that we can use the money to save uh, the lost. That doesn't, uh, God doesn't uh, respect that. In verse 19, verse 19 it says, Thou givest thy mouth to evil and thy tongue frameth deceit lying. In verse 20 it says, Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother thou slanderest thine own mother's son. In verse 21 it says, These things thou hast done and I care silence and thou thoughtest that I was altogether such as such an one as thyself but I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes look at verse 22 now consider this ye that forget God mention in the name of God you forget God coming to the service without straightening out your life, aligning your life with the word of God, you forget God. Doing the same old, rebellious, or righteous, sinful, habitual things that you did before. You're still doing them in the new year. It says, ye that forget God, consider this lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. Verse 23, in verse 23, whoso offereth praise glorifies me, and to him that ordereth his conversation aright, Will I show the salvation of God, the blessing of God, the goodness of God, the fulfillment of the promise of this, of the covenant of God? He will show us as we turn to Him fully and totally, completely, with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and we love Him without any reservation, even from today in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And then we think of all the things the Lord himself has taught us all these many years, everything we've heard that we have dropped by the wayside and we're no more obeying the word of God. We're just living a nominal, shallow life. We're no more deeper life. We're no more higher life, spiritual life. And the life has now become shallow and superficial. And it's from day to day, even to the new year, when I want to talk to the Lord and say, Lord, I realize you can't repent for another person just like you cannot breathe for another person. You cannot drink water on behalf of another person. Anybody going to breathe to remain alive is going to breathe by himself. Anyone that is going to eat so as to uh, you know, solve the hunger problem is going to eat for himself. Anyone who is going to repent, who is going to turn around, who is going to follow after the Lord and begin a new life in Christ has to do that for himself. And the Lord has said, anyone that will now glorify him and order his conversation aright, he will show the fullness of the blessing of the salvation of the Lord. I believe it will start from you. 
I said it will start from you. Rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. Not hypocritical prayer, a prayer of conviction, a prayer in confidence, a prayer in courage, a prayer that stands on the word of God, that obeys the word of God, and then he says he will answer from heaven. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. worship service today. Thank you for your good